Instant Web Celeb is here to help small business owners and entrepreneurs grow their online social following and garner more traffic and engagement to their accounts. Whether you're an entrepreneur, run an online blog, or simply want to grow your profile, we will market your social media account and help you build your online presence by gaining you more followers and likes on all social media sites. Visit InstantWebCeleb.com today to see instant growth to your social media profile and use coupon code WebCeleb for a 10% discount. Become the next Instant Web Celeb now. InstantWebCeleb.com Welcome guys to another episode of the best, the greatest podcast in the world, the Level X Podcast. Your host, as always, the young D, David. My name is Jesus. And guys, you guys are in for a treat. Let me tell you, let me tell you, man, Jesus, we we actually came back last night, man, from our first ever, you can say, book signing slash seminar when it comes to um, self-development or any self-help books. So we're going to talk to you guys about the seminar that we went to yesterday by Damon John, if you guys know him, the author of New York Times bestseller, Power Broke. Besides The Power Broke, um, we are going to talk about, I believe, your book, right? Mm-hmm. Um, can you let them know? I'm going to be talking about The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. And besides that, we are going to talk to you guys about some fun, um, light-hearted articles that we I came across. I don't know if you have some articles yourselves. And, uh, of course, the ending question that we're going to end it off with. Um, as always, I'm not going to talk about a book because I am reading the stupid... I'm already done with that book. I'm already done with that book. And by done, I mean I'm over it, man, because... <laughs> That book is atrocious. I don't know. I I haven't read a long ass book in such a long time that it, it's hard, man. It's hard. Um, but besides that, let's not even get into that. Let's talk about your book first of all, man, because I think that's the most boringest part about the podcast. So let's dive into that. And by that, I mean the book. Um, your summary, man. What does Ken- Mr. Kennedy have to say about that? I'm going to keep it neat. I'm going to keep it Dr- simple. What's his name? Ramsey, my fault. Dave Kennedy. Ramsey. Dave Did you Ramsey. say something else? Yeah, I said, what well, does Mr. Kennedy? And I thought you were going to, you know, add on to. Kennedy. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hated that guy, man. Anyways. Because uh, yeah. he killed Eddie. What? Yeah. Let's get, <laughs> let's, let's get it, sugar tits. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyways, uh, like I said, I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to keep it neat. I'm going to keep it like. simple. That's what I like. The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey, exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna, he's gonna school you on finances, okay, and he's gonna tell you how to get your whole life situation straightened out. That is, if you if you currently have debt, if you currently have a huge mortgage, okay. if you currently don't have any savings, okay, like an emergency fund, he's gonna set all that straight. And this book is laid out so cool. And I'm gonna say it here, guys. Now I'm gonna say it here. No, it's a, now before you, you know, God do your it, pipe bomb. You just, you just, you just interrupted before it, man. Before you Come do on. your, pi- before you do your pipe bomb, I want to ask. I want to ask you. Why don't you have Sonny a shirt boy. on? I'm about to shout out this. Okay, uh, <laughs> Sunny boy, go ahead. Uh, I was actually gonna ask that. Have you ever read any other finance books, and how does this one compare as well? Besides the finance books that they made me read in school, I have never read a finance okay, book so in my life. Okay, so you can't really kind of do a comparison then. Totally. No comparison to none, no other book okay. whatsoever. I'm sure yeah. there are finance books, but I know that Dave is notorious for being one of the top like financial people out there today. He has his own uh, radio show called The Dave Ramsey Show, and there, there he also gives financial advice to his callers and stuff like that. Cool. But besides that, Sorry for interrupting. It's, it's fine, man. I'm going to say it right here, guys. This is the best book I've read this year. Without a doubt. And that's facts. And I'm going to tell you why. Because so 10 out of 10. 
Wow. No, okay, well let's not let's not get a twist and let's not go that let's not go that far. You must be the greatest idiot I ever met. <laughs> no, okay, well look, this book was look, atrocious. Okay, okay, well, well let me let me let me talk, man. Let me talk. No, but on honest, in all honesty, guys, this is the best book I've read this year, and there's two reasons for that. One, there's so much knowledge and information packed into this 300 page book, and two is that. All that knowledge is straight up applicable into your life. He literally gives you a step-by-step process on how you can get your financial situation straightened out. That is, if it's a little distorted right now, that is, if you're currently struggling with debt or paying off any of your bills. He, Dave Ramsey, he, he's very blunt, but he, he's honest in the way that he speaks to the reader of this book. And in all honesty, it just feels like he wants to help the reader out to really, you know, because in the in the book they use so many examples of people who have struggled and who have come back basically from the grave to better out their situation, to better out um, the situation for their families. Because a lot of the stories in this book, real life stories, are with married couples who have kids and who have struggled with debt all their lives. So. It's laid out in the way that first he talks to the reader about, you know, a lot of the misconceptions of finance, of how these misconceptions arise and how they lead to bad purchases in reality. So first he straightens all that out. And then after that, in the second part of the book, he does give a step by step process on how you can have your own total money makeover. So it was so inspirational, man. I'm not going to lie. I actually almost teared up in some parts because the way Dave Ramsey describes financial freedom is amazing. And I always pictured, you know, financial freedom being something where you're like a millionaire or, you know, a hundred millionaire. And that's where you can finally reach financial freedom. But the way Dave describes it is you don't even have to be like a millionaire. You can be having like a $50,000 salary and you can still be financially free with no Uh, no kind of financial burden whatsoever as long as you manage your money properly so that's actually all i really want to say about this book i don't want to necessarily give you guys any you know key points about the book or anything like that make it too long i just want you to know that you know if you're in debt or you currently have credit cards piling up or if you just if you're afraid of falling in debt, like once you lose your job, basically if you have no financial security whatsoever, I definitely recommend you read this book. But the one key thing I will say, the first step of the money uh, makeover process is that you create an emergency fund immediately. That is, Dave Ramsey says you have to build a thousand dollars in savings. That's the first step. So if you have no savings whatsoever, then you should definitely get on that immediately. I know. For me personally, that's the step I got to be taking because I actually don't have that. So it's perfect. Like I said, it's definitely applicable to anyone out there. Just if you've never been like a big reader of finance or you never really cared about it, a lot of people have portrayed it as some kind of boring thing. But I think it's a, and it's it's an essential skill to have in today's world. You know, with all the all these misconceptions on debt and credit cards, it's definitely something that Dan clears up in this book, and it's awesome. Overall rating. I want to say it's an 8.8 out of out of 10. There we go. Nice, nice, nice summary. Quick, easy. I'm excited to read that book myself in the future. And if you're not, I mean, if you're joking, man, I hope you're not because you should definitely read that book. Like I said, best of the year for me. Uh, no, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I definitely, I also have it in my reading list, but I'm not going to read it. It's just now. about, to me, becoming financially, financially literate, man, because before I actually, you know, they don't teach you this stuff in school. At least they didn't teach me this in school, how to how to budget properly, um, what debt really does to you. And uh, I know this world, a lot of it is run like based off credit. But when Dan explains it, he says that it's actually not essential. So I don't know. It, 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 like I said, so much knowledge in the book. Definitely recommend it. But what about you, David? What do you got for us, man? Um, well, like I stated in the beginning of the podcast is that me and you actually actually went to a seminar slash book signing for the first time mm-hmm. when it came to a self-help book. So that was an awesome experience. So I'm actually going to give my take on what I learned from the, the event, from the event, as well as my, th- you know, just what I learned as and also my thoughts about it. 
and maybe you could sh you know chime in as mm -hmm. to what you learned i guess yeah or the way i saw it yeah um but the book signing or the author that we went to go see last night was damon john um he actually wrote the power of broke which is uh, an amazing well-reviewed new york times bestseller book about basically now i'm not gonna lie and say i read the book um yeah. because i haven't i have had that book in my library though in my reading list so i knew that the book was good i just didn't really know of him that much and i didn't know as to what the book portrayed but once i heard that he was coming and then the cause was very very low i was like yeah we should probably go i don't want to miss out on this so then we went and at first i thought it was actually going to be like an actual like seminar where he was actually going to speak like for i don't know for like 30 minutes or some shit um, but it wasn't kind of like that. It was basically just him signing his book. Maybe it's a way for him to sell more books. But he did speak. He, you know, spoke probably like for five minutes. Mm -hmm, five to ten. Yeah. yeah, five to ten minutes. And then he, you know, he just took pictures, signed the books. But the greatest experience about this, and maybe this relates to all book signings when it comes to like self-development books or any type of other books, is that you meet similar people just like you. And there's, you know, there's a big thing when, you know, when a lot of people don't have much friends or they they have trouble finding friends is that, well, I can't find friends that think like me or I can't find friends that, you know, have the same goals as me. Yeah. And I think this is what actually helped a lot in the sense that I didn't, I didn't necessarily make friends. Um, I did talk to a few people, but if in case you are into like the self-help um, field or self-development field and sometimes you have trouble I don't know finding like-minded individuals go to the places that basically you go to I know that I read a quote once where um, it says something about if you go to see let's just say your favorite movie in a theater let's just say they bring it back mm -hmm. and then they play they're playing it in a movie theater and if you go there like in the middle of the movie if, even if you like you know turn around and you see you know while you're smiling that you're watching this movie you know in the big screen once you turn around all those individuals are like like-minded individuals at least in one aspect of your life so you there you have like you know maybe 10 20 people that like that movie so much that they actually went to go watch it as well so there's some type of similarities there it's the same thing with this self-development event it's not necessarily, you know, at first I thought it was more about, okay, what type of knowledge can I learn from the author? But it's not necessarily like that. It's more, what type of knowledge can I learn from other individuals that like the same author as me? Um, and I think that's what I learned. You know, we, well, I spoke to a couple of people and <laughs> I kind of networked, you can say, and then I got a few contacts and I got invited to this event, which we are going to hopefully mm -hmm. by the end of the, of the month where we can talk to more individuals to grow our business. But I don't know, man, it was a great experience and I highly recommend it. You know, depending on the price, um, like I know our tickets were basically like 10, 13 bucks. So that wasn't too, too bad. bad. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. It was just like movie theater. So I'd rather go to this event than an actual movie theater. Um, so that definitely opened my eyes as well as um, I got the book. So I, as well as that, I am going to read that book um, next. Yeah. But I don't know if you want to add anything. To me, I guess the thing, the thing that I took away the most from that event was that, to me, I was kind of fearful in going at first. I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't know. I just haven't been out of the house as much as I should be. But I think it's all about your perception, man. Because going into that event, yeah, when we first stood in line, I was watching everyone else, and you could immediately tell that they were there because they were kind of entrepreneurs themselves they either or were starting their own businesses or they had their own brands of any sort i think a few of them had clothing brands so before i always saw, saw like these networking events as something like i don't know corporate or all oh, these people they really just want to sell you they're not really interested in uh finding out who you are or they're not friendly or something i don't know i think networking gets kind of a bad rap that oh it's just these I don't know, money hungry people who are just there to give you your business card. But the way this event was set up, it was that 
I don't know, it really gave you a chance to talk to these people and find out who they really were. I know the people that you were talking to, you didn't even really start off by saying, oh, hey, are you a businessman or anything? You actually just started talking to them about, you know, their career or where they're from. So yeah. it's, I think that's really essential where you have to kind of go to these events and see for yourself how it is because, yeah, although I was kind of nervous to talk to anyone at first, just seeing you and the way you were interacting with them, it kind of made me feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, and I know I'll definitely try to talk to more people at the next event that we will go to. So it's all about getting out, getting out of your comfort zone. And it's just, you just never know uh, what kind of windows of opportunity will be open to you once you kind of just put yourself out there. So it's definitely important to just go out, try to meet new people, and you can you never know what happens, what kind of connections you'll make. And I was going to say also that not only that, that you kind of also get out of your comfort zone. But I was going to say that I felt like I was also like the youngest one in there. I don't know if you also felt like that. Yeah, I think we were the youngest ones. Yeah. Um, Aside from the babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so that kind of also, you know, some it's how Ryan Holiday says, like, you should kind of like separate yourself from your ego. But that kind of a little bit boosted up my ego because I felt, you know, proactive. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I felt a lot, um, a lot of productivity that I did yesterday, so that was a great, great thing. But yeah, man, at the end of the day, I just highly recommend you go out. Like you said, it's crazy how just one taking action mm -hmm. changes your entire, you know, um, results. So that's definitely true. Like that's what I saw yesterday. Besides that, David, anything else interesting in the past week that has? Um, that kind of stands out that you would like to discuss with the audience? Because I know I have a kind of interesting story to tell them. Um, no, nah, man, I'm going to let you t take take and sh take the reins right now. Um, but after this, I am going to take the reins back, and I w we will start discussing a few other things. Well, if you feel to chime in, because you were actually there with me. No, I wasn't. So <laughs> no, you weren't? Okay, well, I guess I just imagined you being there next to me for the comfort. Um, regardless, I... I if you guys aren't aware, I actually um, and have been trying to get a little bit more fit, a little bit more lean, a little bit more muscular. So I've been going to the gym, and for whatever reason, I started going. I went to a different gym than I normally do, and right when I get there, uh, like one of the workers says like hi to me, and I just think it's like normal. It's like oh, all right, well whatever. Like I guess they're just more friendly at this gym. Because in my other gym, I never get said hi. Well, I guess they, I do, but never like, oh, they never smile at me or whatever. So I, regardless, I did just say hi back and I went to go put my stuff in the locker room. When all of a sudden the worker comes to me and says, hey, would you like this free complimentary uh, workout session? Mm -hmm. One of my one of my scheduled people didn't show up. So I'm like, you know, oh. you know, that was a lie, though, man. Now I'm looking back and I think it was a lie. Well, yeah. regardless... You know she, she ain't a good seller. She about to get fired in a year. <laughs> Damn, that's fucked up. Um, regardless, I actually, you know, do the workout or whatever. And man, did that workout kick my ass. I I felt like kind of like shit. Like I felt like uh, medi mediocre, man, because... Uh, throughout the workout i i was i was ready to give up man like this work this workout wasn't even like meant for someone like me i think it, it's meant for someone like uh what's the guy <laughs> mr vaseline or what's his name the buff ass guy i think his name is rich who rich, oh, rich? the oil yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's someone like him man because look at me like uh, you know i'm not i'm not that defined i have some muscle but but that guy ain't even refined either, Mister Mister Rich. That guy's shredded, bro. That he's guy's shredded. shredded. He's shredded. Doesn't mean he's he has stamina. The thing is that to you, the way I see it is that you see just because someone is built yeah. that they're all around fit, oh, basically okay. meaning all they can do. So stamina. you think fitness is different than? Uh, no, there, there's different types of fitness. Either either okay. you want to bulk up or you want to have an athletic build where you can okay. actually run for forever. Yeah, well, I'm trying to have an athletic build, but honestly... But the thing is that you can have an athletic build. You could be slim, but you could still... Your stamina could still yeah. suck is what I'm saying. Is that, is that you different people train for different things. And the thing is that the way I see it is you're not training... You're not training for... Right now, the way you're training is not, is not for... And doing anything type of athletic yeah well anyways so this workout 
like just straight kicked my ass and it was embarrassing almost really because i i was like i don't know it brought me back to my younger days where i was a little chunkier and i couldn't really keep up with the soccer team so in this case like i was doing some crazy intense ass workouts and then halfway through i was just like it felt like my body was giving up on me my mind was kind of there i was like damn i know i could keep i have to keep going but my body was just like ah oh, fuck i've never i haven't felt this bad like in fucking years so after after the work after workout the worker is done kicking my ass um, you know, after I'm feeling a little down about myself saying, ah, oh, man, maybe I, maybe I'm like, you know, super unhealthy or whatever. I need a, I really need a, cause after that, you know, they try to sell me on a workout plan or I don't know what they fucking on call trainer. it on a trainer subscription or some shit. Yeah. Some subscription shit. So, you know, I think that's how they play it. Right. They like make you feel like shit. To that's make you feel talk, like that's why they talk to you after, so you yeah. can see that all oh, that you do that you. Because at first, shit, after yeah, yeah, exactly. At first, she was being really helpful, like, oh, oh well, what are your workout goals? Uh, you know, oh, this is how you do it. Like, this is what we need to work on for you. I was like, cool. Like, maybe you should let me keep that paper so I can know what I have to work on. But no, afterwards, she was like, oh well, yeah. As you can see, you need it. So, and then and then they don't even like ask you, oh. Well, are you interested? Like, oh well, let me let me let me see the plans, and then um, you tell me which one works best for you. I was like, well, wait, like, cause I I, I don't I'm not put in those situations often, but whenever I am, there I'm like so new to it again that I I find it super hard to say no to people, at least in those situations where it's kind of high pressure and i kind of start feeling bad for them so like i kind of want to help them you're just a little bit it's just like well that's not that's not it's like it's like derogative david, terms it's, it's like but, david ramsey you wonder how he said oh they're gonna kill you if you go to a fucking um a car dealership i bet if you go they'll probably have you fucking signing the papers like that same day well thankfully thank you to dave ramsey i'll never probably go to a dealership at least not where I know. But seeing your skills now, like after that happened. Well, it's always now. It's good because, like, let's say two years ago, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't really feel bad about myself. I'm like, yeah, but that's normal. Like, uh, I know, I know, I'm weakness, my weaknesses, but I, whatever, that's just me. But now, knowing my weaknesses, I know that I have to improve it next time. And plus, you constantly calling me a bitch for the past two days has helped me to see that oh maybe that is a weakness of mine and i have to improve upon that but regardless this is advice to you guys if you ever have a free complimentary workout at your local gym just know that a sale is coming afterwards but that guy that tried to sell me he was he was kind of bad man i'm not gonna lie he 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 was, he was, he was not that good i kind of what are you talking about i thought the girl was horrible i thought the guy was good the guy was okay but halfway through it i can just tell that it was already a sales pitch like it didn't seem like he wanted to help me out that much he just wanted to get the sale done with so I don't. I, for me, it felt like he. Well, I felt the he, girl was more like that than the guy. Well, I think the girl was just like the girl was like the way. At least the guy was direct. The girl oh, was okay. saying fucking indirect as shit, and I picked it up right away. I was like, "What the fuck?" Dude? Well, I picked up the guy right away. Like halfway, I knew I wasn't gonna say yes anymore. Um, so I was just like, "Oh well." Like I kind of snapped out of it, mm. and then it just felt like a sales pitch to me. I, I remember you being like, "Well." <laughs> that's, not, that's, how you that, that's how it is man you're just like well i mean i'm interested why, why didn't you just say no man no well you gotta you gotta kind of dance around it oh well, i'm interested but i just gotta see, wait till my next check and then i gotta spread out my finances and i'll see if i have enough money and plus i don't know even even though it was kind of like horse crap and i wasn't gonna sign up it did make me realize that I have been spending a lot of money on fast food, which is just killer, man. And then that's <laughs> something I can definitely cut back on. You know that you notice how every time they said, "Oh, you're spending," they oh. they round it up. But then every yeah, time, yeah, like yeah. every time they talked about their their programs, their prices were rounded down. And one of the most bullshit things that the guy said what was like, mm. "All right, well, look." The the because these plans are outrageous, man. Like yeah. one one ninety or something like that for three days. Th I think yeah, like three workouts a month. Like that's all they're helping you with. Only three a month. I mean, they can they guarantee six packs, yeah. but I'm sure they do. I'm sure, but I'm sure a lot of it's like, oh well, you gotta eat right. Yeah. Like these workouts ain't helping you because you ain't eating right. Yeah. But anyways, whatever. Um, one of the most bullshit things he said was like, all right, well look, you're 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 spending. Like, 
80 90 dollars well i think they said 90 100 dollars yeah. on fast food a month yeah so i'm like okay it's like and plus let's say you can throw in an extra 20 just for the sake of it like i'm sure you can find 20 extra dollars somehow so that's 120 now in reality since you have that much already coming in you're only spending like 60 dollars out of pocket like wait what like he's like all right well since that you can already like find that in your budget in reality you're only spending 60 dollars out of pocket i was like no, dude, I'm spending $190 out of pocket. What do you like, mean? The math I, does no, not add up. No, I that makes sense. That does not make sense. Like, okay, well, if you want to fucking, like... Because you already... Sp- what he's saying is, like, you're already spending basically, like, 120 a month. Yeah, and I, I was... So, sp- basically, you just have to spend $60 extra a month. Dude, that's a sales technique. There's no... Yeah. Uh, oh, you're only spending $60 out of pocket. Nah, dude, I'm spending $190 out of pocket. That's how much your plan costs. Don't try to fucking, fucking confuse me or some shit. Like, I'm, I don't know. It just felt like he thought that I was some kind of idiot. Like, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to, like, fucking add myself. Like, okay, your shit costs $190. i am spending $190. i am not spending $60. Like, don't try to... I don't know. There's a phrase for that, man, but they're trying to hustle you. That's, that's just I, 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 I like, kind of felt... Pe- Imagine the people that they do get. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure that's how they make most of their money, dude. Yeah. Well, even, even then, our gym is kind of expensive, but but our gym, but the gym that we go to, they don't. There's no hustlers. Oh, there, there. there's no, there's no hustlers, man. They actually care about you. They have this <laughs> cool old guy there that just talks to you and shit. But we're not going to that gym no more. We're going to this other. Oh one. yeah, we found one. a new gym. Oh and man, talking about gyms, our the new gym that we went to today badass. has a basketball court. Badass. I was balling up, guys. Yeah, I was. Right. I think I actually injured my shoulder a little bit. It's kind but, of. It's but kind we, of tight. we gotta talk about those. That crazy shot that I was making. Oh, David, what? Well, see, like David, five, David six. is good in open practice. Like he, <laughs> when he's like warming up, he's draining shots. Like he drained like three in a row today. Yeah. But once in game, this dude couldn't hit a shot to save his well, life. I almost won that twenty-one. You, you, you can't. Like, dude, you that. won because at the end we were exhausted, so we weren't even guarding, and you were just doing layups. So, mm-hmm. anyways, I don't want to bash you, man, but. That you was my ex- that was my experience no, at the but, gym this but, week, man. But man, we're gonna have fun. We should buy a basketball ball or oh, basketball. I just wanna I just wanna go back and play yeah, again, man. It was yeah. fun. It was fun. Anyways, yeah. go ahead, David. What, right, do you, what do you got to tell us? Uh, before we get into the main question of the day, man, we were rambling about damn gyms and hustlers. That girl was hot though. Um, <laughs> um, besides that, uh, you remember that one? Because we do like to keep you guys entertained. We're, you know, we're young, so we sometimes you know. Go on YouTube and watch. Um, man, we even watch Rick and Morty. If you guys don't watch that show, that show's badass. That show's pretty cool. Um, you know, we still, we're still we still kids at heart sometimes. So we do like watching funny shit. Um, but remember, we were watching that Philip DeFranco show. Or actually, you watched that Philip DeFranco show and you showed me yeah. about that court person. Yeah, the one where they're cussing at each other. Exactly. Like, oh, yeah. So what um, Adult Swim did is that they basically made a Rick and Morty um, video about it. So it says Adult Swim has posted a higher quality version of that state of Georgia versus Denver Felton Allen video reenacted by Rick and Morty from Comic Con. So I guess at Comic Con, they Rick and Morty kind of did like a reenactment of the of that video because of the transcript or whatever. Yeah. But now they put it on YouTube. So it's fucking hilarious. It's funny as shit. Think of it. So it's you know it's crazy. Thinking that this actually happened in a courtroom, mm-hmm. so now it's fucking just funny because it's like Rick and Morty fucking debating. So it's fucking funny as shit. We'll post it on our Level X podcast Twitter account. Hey, Ooh. first plug of the day. Let, let them know <laughs> about that, that that handle, man. It's called Level X Podcast on Twitter. If you guys don't know how to spell Level X Podcast, well, you're out of luck because we only want smart people following us. Anyways, first plug of the day, man. I think we're like. Let me see. We're 30 minutes in, and that was the first plug. That might be a new record. Talking about videos, before we do get on to the question of the day, there was actually this hot wing. Complex does this little hot wing thing um, with, like, celebrities. So they eat, like, super spicy hot wings and then just talk about random shit. And it's super funny. They did a new one today with Eric Andre. If you guys are familiar with the Eric Andre show, then you know shit's going to get wild. But talking about hot wings... I, I just came up with a question right now for you, David. What's the best hot wing place you've ever tried? And tell the people right now what it is off the top. 
on the top. I don't know. I, man, I don't even know. I haven't had hot wings in forever. Well, that you all can, I know is that decent, decent, good hot wings that, you know, that they, they, will, they will never go wrong are um, the Pizza Hut hot wings, man. Oh, Pizza Hut, yeah. From Wingstop. And if anyone ever says Wingstop has the best hot wings, I'm going to slap you in the face. Yeah. You know what? That's crazy because at the time, back then, I don't know what it was back then. Back then, though, I used to eat hot, those hot wings, like, on the regular, right? And then after that, I started actually getting, uh, not necessarily buying higher quality wings, but just going out and actually trying out different wings. One day, I forgot what type of wings I tried out, but then, like the following week, I went to Wingstop, and let me tell you, man, those wings tasted horrible. Um, I don't know what it was, man. I don't know what I tried or something, but basically those wings were atrocious and after that i was like you know what i'm never coming here again i don't know if it is because i get reminiscent once, once i'm in there yeah. or some shit but i just know that it's horrible you know once you try the holy grail of wings there everything else just seems normal it's not saying that i have tried the holy grail of wings but it's just the way it is man once you sleep with the hottest chick everyone else just seems kind of normal but to me um Definitely, I think Streets of New York has to be up there. I don't know if Streets of New York is actually from the actual Streets of New York, but those wings are good. And then the that's the best, actually, the best pizza slash wing combination I've ever had because their pizza's really good. Their wings are really good. And it's hard to find places like that, man, where both of them e are equal. Either one's super up and one's super low. But this one, the balance is just right. But other than that, I think what... I think uh, I think it's time to move on to the question of uh, El Dia. So, David? Well, yeah, guys, question of the day. Um, now, this is a great one because we actually talked about this topic a couple of weeks ago. So, maybe we found new knowledge. Um, basically, the question of the day is... Um, ser um, let, let me just begin by, by reading it out, man. It says, all right, so far, so for about the last two years 10 and 11 grade so this guy's in high school mm -hmm. i haven't had any friends none not ones zero my junior year i sat alone for 100 percent of all lunches that's that's horrible right there and didn't hang out with anyone once after school or during the weekends i just moved to a new neighborhood and my school begins in two weeks i am terrified of going back because i will have to sit alone during lunch which completely sucks i feel you on that one how do i make friends I am planning on joining a sport again and would like to know how to not sit alone at lunch. Even for the first day of school, how do you manage to find someone on the very first day of school and be able to hang out with them or at least sit with them at lunch? So um, basically to summarize this, uh, please give me some advice on how to make friends. Now this guy's in high school, so um, hit him with your knowledge since I hit him with my knowledge last week. First. You're right, you're right. I don't think I hit him with knowledge yes, last week. I was in a weird mood. Um, all right, man. <clears throat> I was actually kind of in a similar now, situation. to help you out to be uh, Jesus, David, why do you always do that, now, man? Hold on, you're hold always on. cutting me off, hold up. bro. Hold up. Be before I talk. Um, or before, you're, you're already talking. Before, already talking. before I get into mine, Jesus I think just to kind of guide you to good advice is that maybe you should talk about or maybe switch it onto your feet like what type of advice knowing now would you what you know now would you give your high school counterpart yeah <clears throat> going back i knew i was like a kind of like a shy kid in high school i didn't really were you yeah i definitely. thought you were funny <laughs> uh, i guess i don't want to like be arrogant or anything i i think i had a couple of good jokes back then um yeah, I was kind of a, a shy kid. Like, I didn't know necessarily, like, oh, what kind of a person I was. I was kind of trying to imitate everyone else. And up until, like, senior year, I didn't really have, like, anyone I can really, like, say, oh, shit, like, that's my best friend or anything. Uh, aside from you, but even then, we had different lunches, so yeah. we didn't really hang out. So I was kind of stuck hanging out with, uh, like, some friends who I didn't really, like, connect with that much anymore. So... Going into my senior year, like, I felt like a, kind of a new student because, like, that was the time where I didn't really, like, I wasn't really close to anyone, I think. I don't know what the hell was going on, but going into my, oh, actually, I think you left. You had graduated, so I was like, oh, for the first time in high school, yeah. I'm not going to have you around, so I'm going to have to kind of be on my own. Um, And just talking from, ex like, 
from my own experience because I don't know what kind like my senior year was actually the best year because that's kind of where I started talking to more people and the way that happened was that I actually started joining clubs like I think I had to do you, a lot of you did yeah I had to do a lot of community service so just to get scholarships and, and stuff like that so I started like the first day I started like going to where all the club events were because I think on the first week that's where they start posting like the full the posters up because clubs start like almost immediately so that's what I started doing and that's actually how I started meeting more people and that's how I started meeting different people because I joined two different clubs for weird huh like I joined two clubs like I joined some art club and then I joined some actually like some community service club and just right off the bat, I started like just talking to more people through that route. And that's how I actually started making more friends. So even now, like in college, like I, that's what we're planning on doing, just joining clubs. And that's how we're going to try to meet more people. Yeah. But even then, joining clubs isn't going to like solve anything for you as long as you don't interact with everyone else. So exactly. um, do you have any like now that I kind of set the layout, how do you talk to people, David? Like, how do you get out of that, your comfort zone? Well, like, cause you're better at it than I am. Well, I don't know, man. Everyone tells me that all the time. Like you are the second person that told me this like that, like, oh, you're better at that. Because even that dude that I was talking to yesterday, yeah. he was saying, man, like, cause I told him, I was like, Hey, yeah, well, I'm actually taking a communications class next year. Cause I don't think that's where I lack in. And he's like, really? It doesn't seem like you lack in that. And I'm like, yeah, man, it's to me, it feels like I lack in it. So I don't know. Maybe it's true, man. Maybe you, you kind of psych yourself out before you actually, you know, mm -hmm. do some shit, but that's besides the point, man. Um, like I, I'm like you, man, in the sense that I never really, I was never much of an extrovert, even though, for some odd reason, people knew who I was. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like people knew all. Oh, yeah, hey David, like. Yeah, hey David. Oh, oh, your uncle's David, or oh, all oh, the brothers. But anyways, I was gonna say that. Yeah, man. So, for that reason, like I never really extended out to people. You know, it was always just me, you, and then also like, we joined sports outside of school, and then that's how we knew kind of our friends oh yeah 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 um the issue that i had like went like this it i had this sim same issue i think once i left um like throughout high school i was like and i was an honor kid you can say and mm -hmm. honor kids had honor classes so all the honor kids will hang out with the same honor kids but the reason i didn't really like the honor kids is because some of them felt like a little how do you say that when um I feel like the honor kids felt like they were better than everyone oh, else. Oh, yeah. Like, they were kind of pretentious. Yeah. So, I didn't really sit well with that. You know, I was like, ah. Uh, because then, they, you know, I don't know. I they just, just think they're smarter than everyone else. Yeah, kind of just because they're taking honor classes yeah. and they're talking about, oh, I'm going to college. Oh, I got that this much money. Mm -hmm. of So, I never really liked that. So, then my senior year, my senior year I actually got out of the honor um honor classes just because i wanted a easier senior yeah. year so i got out of the honor classes that i basically spent three years in with um making friends there and going to my senior year where i basically didn't have the same lunch as my old friends or whatever um and then just my entire um schedule changed and i had to actually sit with new people and i think that's that's why senior, senior year was cool and all because I think the only reason it was cool because I found a girlfriend and all this shit, so mm -hmm. I didn't really focus too much on making friends. Um, so, but I know that there was a point in senior year that before I got a girlfriend or whatever, that I was like, "Damn, this shit sucks." Like, I don't have anyone. Like, I don't, I don't even know if I'm gonna go to senior parties or anything, you know. Uh, so that kind of sucked. Um, but the way like now that I make friends is basically just kind of like manning up and kind of relating to to the individual and by relating I mean uh, just talking about their interests man I think that's the number one key step I don't know if that works too much in high school but I know that some people are going to be like you in the sense that they don't have friends or they don't it's hard for them to make friends 
And if you basically put two individuals like that together, then nothing's going to come out of it. So you have to actually, you know, grab your balls and actually put action, you know, action mm-hmm. forward, you know, go up to, instead of sitting alone, sit or, you know, in a table where it's basically populated and maybe talk to the person next to you. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe go up to a person that's like eating alone, go like, you know, and sit next to him or her and just talk, man. Talk about, hey, how was your summer? Since you're a new student, you have a lot of shit to talk about how your old school was, where you're from. You have a lot of shit to talk about. Um, Also, like you said, clubs is a major thing, and I think that's what we're going to do next or this upcoming semester. But even Mm -hmm. this semester, it was like my second semester. Like my first semester in college, it was um, I was just there just to actually do classwork. But now that I'm actually... In, you can say college like in that little vibe or that little mentality um i do want to make more friends and i think we actually yeah. met like a couple people this this year actually and i made actual i mean good i mean they're cool friends like i actually made some friends that i can actually call friends you know um and by that is just you know i went out and just actually talked to them i was like hey you know the the way guys make friends and i read this somewhere is that you kind of have to share an experience so um, maybe if you're like in, in class and you're doing like a group assignment, reach out, you know, talk, make the group talk, um, share that, ex- that experience with someone. And that way you're going to, you know, you can share something with them. That's, that's true, man. Group projects were like the best thing that I did, or at least, um, when they make you sit in pairs in class, that's like the best way that I actually started meeting new people. I just started being like more silly, more like just not really take, I, I took class seriously, like school seriously, but in class I was just kind of like bullshit and I don't know, like I always made the person next to me laugh and that's how I kind of started talking to more people. Um, I was going to say, dude, you're in sports, like that's the perfect way. Well, he wants to join sports. Well, then that's perfect. Like I know sports kind of last like one semester and then the next semester it's a new set of sports. So right off the bat, go to like the first week of tryouts and just... um hopefully you're athletic so you actually kind of make the team and even if not you can actually just still um share experiences with whatever sports team you decide to try out for it's yeah. gonna be cool and then once you you actually have like let's just say friends but they're only kind of like school friends you got to reach out and make them you know more into like actual good friends and by doing that is you have to go out and invite them somewhere everyone not everyone's gonna invite you to places because um you know they, they might see you not as a good friend, but that's why you had to put action and actually, um, you know, call them up or even text them and be like, hey, I'm doing this or I ha- actually have these plans. Are you guys down? Just by you putting forward, hey, you inviting them, they're going to invite you in the next time. Yeah. Um, the way I met uh, an old really good friend of mine, Ozzy, we actually, me and uh, David used to make like videos on YouTube and for whatever reason he saw us on youtube and he was like hey man like i want to i want to make videos with you guys that, that like super funny and shit um and like at first we even like told him like no we don't we didn't really want him yeah. on our videos and eventually we started like making more and that's when for whatever reason like we actually like thought of him like ah oh, well let's just make videos with this guy and that's how we become became freaking best friends at, uh, at the end yeah and then i was going to say too also one of the things is that like one of the things i do is when Game of Thrones was playing uh, the the following Monday or if I had class on Monday, I would go on Monday and then in my CIS class or whatever, I would just say, man, shit, uh, Game of Thrones was crazy last night, huh? Some shit like that, you know? You bring up conversation with them and they're like, oh shit, you guys watch Game of Thrones too? And then that, like that, that's how you start conversations. And then uh, last resort, you know, if everything's going wrong, you just go up to a random person and be like, sup, bro? Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding, but hopefully that was enough advice for you. Trust me, um, everyone's been at that point where they're like, gosh, shit, maybe I don't relate to anyone what else. What about those like, cheerleaders, though? I don't think they've been there. Well, I don't know. According to Barney Stinson, a lot of the hot girls are super insecure about themselves and have daddy issues. Maybe. But that's Barney Stinson. So anyways, uh, that's where we'll leave it at on today's episode of the Level X Podcast. Tip of the week, go out there and have the best experiences you can, man. Get out of your comfort zone. Go make new friends. Go have 
awesome, awesome experiences. I know David's birthday is coming up this week, so we're, we're about to go turn up and see Suicide Squad. Um, we haven't read any reviews, so... I mean, I think it'll be good. No, we're not running into any kind of mess there. Nope. Anyways, follow us on the Level X podcast Twitter account. We'll post all the articles we saw today. We'll post pictures. We post all kinds of cool stuff on there. Follow us, guys. Anything else you want to say, David? Nah, man. We will see you guys next week. Peace.